cataractcoach.com. This EDOF patient will be amazed. So here's how to select the patient and the post-op refractive target. Now, first things first, the patient has very realistic expectations. The patient is a highly myopic patient, wears about a minus 10 prescription for distance at the moment, and actually prefers to walk around slightly undercorrected in the spectacles. And so in this case, patient has very reasonable expectations. Patient is aware that he's going to lose the near benefit of the minus 10. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, minus 10, how good is that? Well, as you know, mathematically, it means that one-tenth of a meter or 10 centimeters from his face, probably some about four inches, he has this big, huge, perfect focus for pulling out splinters or looking at diamonds, let's say. But for day-to-day life, having that focal point of four inches or 10 centimeters from your eye, not very useful. This patient's also very athletic and enjoys outdoor activities and is really sick of wearing contact lenses. And so in this case, this patient, again, realistic expectations, we are aiming to leave this patient a pinch of myopia post-op, about a minus a quarter, maybe minus a half even, I think the patient will be thrilled. Remember, the patient already walks around slightly undercorrected in both contacts and glasses. So starting off here, trying to poke in the capsule, get our rexus done. Because it's a myopic guy, important that we wanna measure that rexus. So we're going to use our forceps here. Look at that. I'm measuring, getting an idea in my mind. I don't want to have too big of a rexus here. With a big eye and a big corneal white to white and big dilation, you can be fooled into making too big of a rexus if you just follow the dilation. So that's why I use my forceps there. Those two marks are two and a half millimeters and five millimeters from the tip. So it allows me to create that really nice, near perfect five millimeter caps rexus. Wow, I'll take it. That looks great. So patient has very realistic expectations. Again, already walking around a little bit myopic and undercorrected. And another thing is, remember, what's the downside of an EDOF lens like this? This EDOF lens with a central focusing element puts about two-thirds of the incoming light to distance vision and about a third of the incoming light to that intermediate zone. So intermediate zone is probably somewhere around 60 centimeters or so. So because of that, the downside at night is that about one-third contrast loss at nighttime. Because remember, at night, only two-thirds of the photons are going for distance vision. About a third of the photons are still going to intermediate. You can't change that, even if you're driving at night. So in a case like this, I'm convinced when I look at the patient preoperatively at the slit lamp that the amount of cataract or nuclear density that I could increase or improve the patient's post-op night vision. So this patient with a EDOF lens at nighttime has much better night vision than he had preoperatively with his contacts or his glasses. So that's a net improvement. And in that case, the patients are going to be happy. So here we see we chop the cataract in half, try to bring one half out of the bag. There it is. It comes up pretty nicely. And we'll emulsify that. Now, not a very dense cataract, maybe two plus nuclear sclerosis. So again, another factor that I know I can make the patient's night vision better than now. The other thing is that this patient has larger than typical pupils. So that's gonna help at night, but it may also de- uh, decrease the amount of depth of field the patient gets or in the eye depth of focus. And that's because the aperture size is a little bit on the larger side. It's also another reason why we wanna aim for a little bit of post-op myopia. I think the calculation said that we, this eye would end up about minus 0.3 or so of post-op myopia. And again, that was fantastic for the patient. I told you earlier, the patient has realistic expectations and the patient also has a lot of outdoor activities. In the sun, the patient has a lot of time outside with bright sunlight. Even these big pupils tend to come down because the sunlight's so bright, even with sunglasses. So another example where this patient's going to have, you leave a minus a half even in his activities that he enjoys, which is outside during the daytime doing sporting activities, that Uh, pupil size is going to come down, you'll have a little more pinhole effect from that pupil, and you're actually going to have fantastic distance vision, even at minus a half. So again, patient has a lot of factors that are lining up telling me this is going to be a really nice outcome here. So polishing up the caps are back here, cleaning it up real nice, so we'll get that lens in, and I'll show you how I center up that lens. Another thing too is the patient has a very normal or mild angle alpha, angle cap, everything's going to line up beautifully so we want to just get that lens centered up in that visual axis, and I think the patient is just going to be really thrilled. In fact, this surgery was about a month ago, and the patient has had a fantastic outcome. Patient's absolutely pleased. And you're saying, what about the, the loss of that ultra near, that 10 centimeter away from your face near vision? Well, 
like I explained on the page, you know, we can get you some some uh, magnifiers online or some loops or something for the rare times you need to pull out a splinter or do something that up close. But for day-to-day -day living, this patient has a fantastic outcome. So we'll get that lens delivered here. Another thing that helps me too is this patient's tall. This patient's taller than me. This patient's probably about 186, 187 centimeters, so a little bit more than six feet tall. And this patient therefore also has longer arms and tends to hold things a little farther from the face, a little bit closer to that intermediate zone. So this patient, because of the way he lives his life and holds things, etc., this patient actually has fantastic reading vision. He's happy. And the patient reports almost rarely or never using any sort of reading glasses. So there's that lens nicely centered up here. Beautiful overlap of the optic by that rexus. Now we'll take out our viscoelastic and finish this up. The other thing too, patient's very healthy, as you can imagine, all that outdoor activity. Patient is not diabetic, not hypertensive, and is going to heal well. The challenge here is you have a patient who has less than good healing. Patients who are diabetic with poorly controlled blood sugars, not going to be as predictable. This patient also has a perfect looking macula. No epiretinal membrane, nothing of that nature. The rest of the eye looks fantastic. So because of all these factors combined, I was sure that this patient's going to have a fantastic outcome and fantastic visual results with this extended up to focus lens. And in fact, it's absolutely what we achieved here. A little bit of last viscoelastic in the eye, get that washed out, get that centered up. Wow, looks beautiful. So keep all these factors in mind and you can tailor the patient's vision to whatever he or she needs for their daily activities. Thanks for watching.